Yes, good morning. Um, um, it's a blessed day, and a beautiful Sunday morning. And um, I was just uh, meditating on something, uh, even as there have been a gradual easing, ease down of the lockdown. Um, you know, with the lockdown of the past three months, the, the churches, uh, worship centers have been shut down. And uh, we, it's been a time of recalibrations, a time of reset. Uh, we've been running things online, and we've been seeing a, a across the world people have been talking about the new normal, and uh, we have truly seen a great shift from what it used to be. But. In Nigeria, even as the federal government announced the easing down of easing off of the lockdown and um, a gradual returning to normal, especially with the opening of worship centers, as I and today being the first Sunday, where churches are meeting in some of the states where they have been given the go ahead. Um, I know that in some states, things have been put together, structures have been put in place to ensure that there is a proper monitoring of uh, the, the, the worshippers, um, things that the, the churches must put in place to ensure safety of members. However, as I, this morning as I was just meditating on, I, I was listening to, I was watching some churches mm -hmm. online and the worship that was going on and things that were happening, it just occurred to me, and this question popped up in my heart, and I believe is the question that we all need to answer, especially as believers, as, um, as um, leaders in the body of Christ. We need to pause a while to give answer to these questions. And the question is this, now that there is um, the easing off and we are returning back to the place of worship, in the period of our lockdown, in the period of our, I want to believe, our waiting on the Lord, what, what have we been able to birth in the place of prayers? What have we been able to get? Were we able to ponder on the way we ran church? Were we able to ponder on, on the way we did things before the lockdown? Are we going to return to the usual way of doing things? Forget about what the pandemic have caused. Say, um, take for example, where we have to go to church, um, put wearing mask, where we have to uh, do the you know um, social distancing washing of hands, the hygiene and all that. Let's leave that apart. Let's look at the spiritual implications. What, how, how have we run church? Before the lockdown, how did we run church? And now, the post-pandemic or the post-lockdown period, now that we are returning, are we going to do things the way we did it before now? Or have we learned something is there something new that we are introducing into our worship style? What is the world going to learn? You know, I look at um, Acts, the, you know, the book of Acts. Before, the, before Jesus went away, before he was ascended back into heaven, and um, he had the time of, he spent time with the disciples. And he taught them a lot of things. Now, before Jesus came, after the crucifixion and burial of Jesus, the disciples were told that they all scattered. What it meant was, now these people had been with Jesus for three and a half years, but when Jesus, after the death and crucifixion of Jesus, they were all scattered all over the place. Peter went to do fishing and, fishing and all that. However, when Jesus came, he gathered them again, and he began to instruct them. Now, we got to see why 
they could not carry on after Jesus, after the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus, I mean, the crucifixion of Jesus and the burial. We now got to see why they could not carry on the life, the, the lifestyle they had learned with Jesus. And the key is in this. In Jesus told them that they should tarry in Jerusalem, they should wait, that something was going to happen. He had told them in John chapter 16 that when he leaves, that he's going to pray the Father to release the promise of the Holy Spirit. And when the Spirit of truth is come, he's going to guide them into all things, he's going to teach them. He's going to guide them into all truth. He's going to teach them all things. And he's going to bring into their remembrance the things that he had told them. Now, he told, in Acts chapter 1, he began to instruct them. And he told them, when the question was asked that, will God restore unto Israel all things at this time? And Jesus answered to them, the, Jesus' answer to them was that, see, they shouldn't bother themselves with the things that the Father had put in his own power which means he determines when that will happen, when all things will be restored. He said, however, what you should do is, for you, you tarry in Jerusalem. Don't move, don't go anywhere, don't do anything. Just remain until something happens to you. He said, the promise that we talked about, he said, you will be endued, you shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, then you will be witnesses. What it means is that the reason you could not be witness to me is because there is something that was lacking. There is something that you had not received, and that is the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. He said, now, you wait. Don't go. Don't do anything. You just wait. Tarry. Keep praying. Keep pressing in until you be endued with power from on high, the release of the promise, the, 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 the outpouring of the Holy Spirit when it comes upon you, then, and only then, can you go and you will be witnesses. As a matter of fact, the Spirit will begin to drive you to do things that you couldn't do in and by yourself before He came. Now, having said that, you will see that what we have done in this in all of this time of waiting, I believe that the Lord permitted the pandemic to come to shut down the systems that we have built. Flesh had built tradition, and we have built systems upon flesh and tradition. And God had to shut all that down. We had a way. There was a definition of church that we had that was not aligning to what God had in mind, which, means, which is the ecclesia, a people that were chosen out, selected out, brought out, separated from a system to 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 teach them to train them and to fellowship with them so that through them he will start establishing a new system a system of the kingdom a system that would overrun the systems of the world but you know you agree with me that the old wine skin church did not align herself with that particular god ordained purpose and God like shut down everything in order that would be aligned with his original purpose, that which he had in mind even before the birthing of the early church, which we saw in the book of Acts. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, we saw what happened, that from that time on there was a transformation in the lives of these people, such that the Bible records that by through 120 people, God turned the whole world upside down. What it meant that there was an unusual move of the Holy Spirit. There was an unusual break everywhere. People knew, people saw that, look, there's a new kind of people that have been introduced on the earth. And this, this, these guys, they change and they transform the whole systems of the world. Before now, we have put in place, we have been too focused on, you know, the, the gathering of numbers, you know, we, we, we get excited when we see large numbers and everything, yet we could not affect the systems of the world. And that is why we, are, we, we see that we complain so much that the government is not changing things and the people are, the, the, the politicians are not changing things, but we forget that we are the, tra the, the agents of transformation that God set in this world. Remember the charge that he gave to Adam and Eve when man was first created, he said, he gave them dominion over all things, every created thing. He, he gave them dominion over, over the birds of the air, over the fishes of the sea, over, over, over every creeping thing, every living thing that creeps upon the face of the earth. 
He gave them authority. He gave them power. He gave them the dominion to rule over the sins. He gave them, the, he told them, he said, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it. In other words, man was in charge. They, they needed, he gave man the authority to build a system that will oversee and that will that would establish the you know the nature of, of 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 the kingdom the very kingdom of god here on earth but you see what we have done is that we have relinquished to what we are supposed to be the, our responsibility we've relinquished to the politician we expect that the politician will bring about changes meanwhile the politician is hoping that the church will help them and bring them and bring them into divine alignment so that they too can it can, can actually begin to effect changes. I, I something occurred to me a long time ago when people were complaining about this government, that government, and all that. It just hit me hard, and that was the fact that even the government is helpless. They don't know what to do. They've tried everything they could, but they don't know what to do. They need a new, a new kind of government, a new system that will put in place that, that, that will introduce another kind of life, another kind of system. And that is where the ecclesia are coming. That is where we as believers, that is where we as the people of God, the body of Christ, that is where we come in. But what have we done? All we have done is that we have built dynasties for ourselves. We have, we have carved out niches for ourselves. And we are expecting that the politicians should change the systems of the world. But no. Remember, and that was why every time, every time there is a move of God, God really does not... Does not go looking for people within 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 a um, the, the the what we call church, the church system. You know, God actually either from the church or from anywhere, He takes out a people, a select few, and these are the ones that He uses to establish a system and to build a system that will begin to transform the whole world. Now, the question I started with is this. In these last three months that have been a lockdown, as leaders, as pastors, as apostles, as prophets, as general overseers, as superintendents of ministries and all that, what have you learned? What new thing are you bringing? Are you going to return to the old way of running things or are you going to, uh, were you able to tap into divinity? Were you able to tap into the kingdom system in order to to, to be able to back system uh, so that as church is resuming now, as, as, as there is a gradual um, um, uh, uh, ease down of the lockdown that have been in the past three months, we, ha we are coming with a fresh blood. We are coming with something new. We are coming with um, um, the mind, the mindset of building system. We are coming with this mindset of allowing ourselves to be used by God to establish the new wine structure that will carry the glory, the weight of the glory that is about to be released. We've been praying for revival. We've been crying out for revival. We've been asking God for a, a, a move. But this is the time for us to really, truly get ourselves established and aligned with God so that we'll be, we'll be useful in the hands of God and we'll know what He wants us to do and we'll truly begin to execute those things to build you know life-changing systems systems that will overrun the world and that will bring sanity and peace into the society i pray that god will enable us the truth is if we focus on building systems we'll have a we'll, we'll have we'll not just we'll not just be focusing on our members you'll find that we'll be focusing on national revival worldwide revival i pray that the lord will help us and that the lord will bless you even as we go back meditate on this if we've not done it already and we have this mindset that as we return it will not be business as usual but we'll begin to wait on the lord to download the new one structure that will transform the world around us lord bless you have a wonderful day and i pray that the weeks the days to come the days and the days unfold that things will begin to unfold to us and will be made very clear to us in Jesus' name. God bless you.